I'm Master Saturn. Thank you for joining me for another BDSM United podcast. You're an alpha sub? Well, what do you mean by that? Now, this topic originally was posted by Master Mark over at Deviance and Desire, but we loved it and we wanted to share it with you. If you ask someone to identify themselves, there's all kinds of hybrid combinations that you might hear in reply. And one that's really going to cause confusion is alpha sub, because there are several different ways to use the term, and at least one is contentious within our BDSM community. The term alpha sub has a long tradition in the leather community, but it's within a multi-person situation where there's a hierarchy. A household may have a master, and then it may have an alpha slave and one or more other slaves. The slaves submit to the master, obviously, but there's a negotiated hierarchy where the alpha has some authority delegated over the others in the household. And with that, authority has responsibility, too. Uh, there's this idea of hierarchy also extends to uh, some primal situations, pups, wolves, um, and uh, despite the, uh, or sorry, uh, and so alphas may be, sorry, the dominant members of the pack for those who are involved in pet in primal play. Uh, sometimes bringing this brings an animal instinct into their dynamics so that you can better understand why there would be like an alpha. It's the um, person who has the more dominant, uh, uh, as far as uh, more dominant characteristics, uh, animalistic characteristics of a different, uh, within submissives, uh, a master in that regard would be a handler or an owner of said pet or said primal. The more recent usage of alpha sub, however, is the one that causes the most contention within the kink community. It has risen in parallel with the term alpha female or more generally an alpha personality. In this usage, the term alpha sub is used to indicate a woman who is submissive in her primary, primary relationship identity, but is frequently assumed by others in more vanilla settings to be a dominant person. Usually the kind of woman the general population can't imagine bowing down to anyone, male or female, someone who's assertive, opinionated, directive, competitive, independent, not a doormat. The problem that many people have with this usage is that it assumes that people who don't identify as alpha are these things. And of course, that's very seldom the case. It's just, you know, it's making a wide generalization and a huge assumptions that just generally aren't true. Are non-alphas weak, dependent, not assertive, of course they're not. Submission is not in any way a weakness, so this isn't a game of opposites anyhow. Nearly every submissive that we've ever met, and certainly every submissive that we've bothered to get to know, has been strong. They've been able to take care of not only themselves, but uh, the world around them. They've been able to handle themselves. Strong people who are submissive are nothing new. It takes an inordinate amount of strength of character and will to submit in whatever way someone decides is best for them to submit. The level of trust and self-control it takes is nothing short of awe-inspiring. So if you label yourself an alpha sub, do be aware that other submissives are going to possibly see that as, dis as both divisive and po possibly insulting. We like to go through identities uh, and uh, try to separate them out. And uh, some of the things that we, uh, that we tend to shy away from is adding adjectives to your identities. Uh, 
by adding adjectives, um, you oftentimes get in a really bad place. Uh, adding bratty submissive, for, in for instance. Bratty is, or bratting is a kink. And so while you may enjoy bratting as a kink, you probably enjoy a lot of other kinks too. So adding kinks to the front of your identity is problematic because you're pigeonholing yourself to uh, one primary kink when you could be an impact submissive and a needle play submissive and a, and a rope submissive. You could be, you, there's all kinds of kinks you, you probably enjoy. So adding an adjective is going to be a problem because it, people are then expecting you to only be involved with that one kink, or at least that's how it sounds or comes across. And so, you know, if that's how you want to be seen, it's not traditional. It's something else. Uh, to note that um, the identity of daddy or mommy, and sometimes we add dominant to the end of it, um, the dominant part there is is in a, is a uh, oftentimes unnecessary addition because a daddy or a mommy is a parental role and is therefore automatically by itself a dominant role. And so uh, it's already by itself. It's not adding putting daddy or mommy. Uh, or adding, sorry, adding dominant or dom to daddy or mommy is um, not the same as adding an adjective because daddy and mommy can stand alone as identities. And they're both very traditional identities uh, as far as long as we can remember long before the Internet, uh, daddy and mommy was a uh, identity within BDSM, within the BDSM community. Originally, daddy, and then uh, when lesbians started to become more widely involved in BDSM, uh, mommy was a, uh, or that motherly parental uh, uh, role, or sorry, identity was, uh, was more uh, prevalent. And so identities, we, uh, you know, by adding uh, an adjective of alpha to submissive, uh, we would just advise against it uh, unless you're in a hierarchical role where you're uh, you're a you're one of many submissives and then you're the uh, primary submissive would probably be a little less divisive than alpha unless you're all giving yourself Greek alpha beta gamma uh, Omicron or whatever they are. Uh, sorry, I'm just throwing things out there. I don't know my Greek letters, uh, but um, I, I haven't st studied Greek since university, so I'm kind of uh, uh, kind of not good with my biblical Greek or Hebrew. So these days, but anyway, so unless you're adding a different uh, Greek adjectives to all the different submissives and putting some kind of pecking order amongst all of them, uh, then probably it's not something that you want to, not an adjective that you want to use. Just saying, just giving you some advice from somebody in the community. And, you know, we generally shy against adding adjectives to dominant identities too like soft dom or as opposed to hard dom or pleasure dom you know these are all very problematic because they are um pigeonholing somebody into something that they're probably not always going to be you're not always going to under every opportunity be soft and if you are soft what does that even mean how do you quantify that and um it's definitely not a traditional thing, and it's kind of a problematic thing just in general. Something we would advise against. Just be a submissive. Be a dominant. It might sound plain, but it, uh, it keeps from people being confused.
I'm Master Saturn. Thank you for joining me for this BDSM United podcast. You can find all of our not safe for work, naughty stuff at mastersaturn.com, our uncensored social media. And you can find all of our BDSM resources and pages and things at bdsmunited.com. It was a joy bringing this topic to you today, and we'll talk with you again soon.